observe touch screen. <laughs> touch screen. Oh boy, do we ever have a treat today. So this is, and get this, a 42 inch touch screen PC. Look, we've got the DVI connector going from the ATX motherboard into the input of the monitor. So this thing comes from a local company. Apparently they were f trashing an older color mixing thingamajig. I don't know. This thing's been used for selecting colors for houses or something like that. And they were just scrapping the system and asked, hey, you want our old giant touchscreen monitor? Health, we're just going to toss it. And of course I was like, hell yes, I would. And uh, here we've got it. Uh, I tried to pair it up once and it let out uh, smoke and crackling noises. So I figured we'd take it apart before we actually try that again. Uh, I would imagine it doesn't have any giant faults. It was very dusty when I first got it. So I'm thinking perhaps it was just a bit of uh, sparking in some spark gap on the power supply main side. Uh, it did get, get so far as to show a no signal image before I just killed it uh, in order to prevent further damage. So I'm going to take it apart, it's going to come apart like any other industrial monitor slash TV bunch of screws around the outside. It's uh, dated, uh, I believe, uh, 2010, judging from a number here on the back, and it seems to be made in Taiwan by... Uh, I'm not even entirely sure what company, uh, but uh, in the case of one of these things, it doesn't really matter who's made it. It's such a limited production run device because it does have a big border. It's not going to be used for giant uh, screen arrays or something. So these are going to be uh, pretty unique on the inside, I would wager. But yeah, let's just get inside. Can't wait. All right, and here are the innards. So uh, we've got to uh, two power supplies. Uh, one is the uh, main power supply for the uh, TV part or the monitor part. It's uh, putting out uh, 24 volts and 12 volts just to power all the monetary stuff. And we've got a separate uh, Seasonic 160 watts ATX power supply pairing the PC, which seems to be an Intel, Intel motherboard with some kind of uh, Intel CPU in there. I've got no real idea what age this is going to be, but uh, it actually does look rather recent, really. It's got DDR3 and uh, PCI Express, so this is going to be like a, a very late-gen Core 2 Duo, or it could even be an iSeries processor, an LDA 1156 or 1155, something of that vintage. Of course, coupled to a horrible old mechanical hard drive. So the uh, monitor part itself uh, seems to be one of these... Uh, probably LG brand uh, kind of TV kits. It's got a, a panel inverter here, which uh, these come with a panel, so uh, they're very common to see in these industrial things, all entirely integrated, often get bad caps, so we're gonna have to check that out as well. Uh, and we've got a dinky little scaler, which really, it looks like something you'd buy off of eBay, not too impressed with that at all. Uh, the capacitors are branded Stone, which is not a very well-known brand at all. Uh, but uh, I do not think that is going to be an issue in the slightest, because I do believe I have found the actual problem. And believe it or not, it is inside the Seasonic power supply because it is full of this yellow goop and anybody who's worked on old electronics will have a bit of a distaste for this stuff and indeed if we have a look right in between this choke and big blue cap in there we can see that it started to turn conductive and it's clearly across a resistor which has quite a bit of voltage drop across it so, in order to render this device usable, we're going to have to clean this power supply up. I'm glad I didn't let it run for longer, because that would have caused significant damage in the long term. Shame on you, Seasonic. Shame on you. Alright, after copious amounts of cleaning, uh, we have arrived at what I do believe is a working power supply for a PC. So, I've... Uh, uh, given it a quick test, I haven't tested it with a PC yet, so my fingers are itching. Let's turn on the power. 
and see what happens. So we've got a blue green LED on the motherboard. The backlight on the TV is on. I believe this is the panel button for the PC. We've got fan spin. Display's on and we've got a beep. I do believe that we've got a winner. Now before we get carried away playing with this thing, uh, there's a couple of things left to consider. Uh, what you're looking at right now is the power input connector to the uh, backlight driver for the panel. Uh, I had the foresight to check the datasheet for this and I'm glad I did because you can see we're missing a few pins here and one of them is brightness control. So the only way the scaler is going to have to control brightness of a panel is by just doing digital brightness adjustment, the backlight stuck at 100%. So I have remedied that in the best way possible by adding a bunch of Cat5 wires, leading to, what else, a potentiometer tacked onto the panel with sticky tape. So this is just a single channel 10K pot, which takes in 3.3 volts from the power on signal there, uh, and has ground there and is putting out a variable analog voltage on the middle pin. And this is actually good enough to control the brightness of this device because if I turn this, uh, I can see the power meter jumping from about 100 watts to well over 230, which is what well, this thing draws at maximum brightness. So I'm going to have to incorporate this into the case uh, because I really do like to have brightness control on my monitor. This thing is brighter than the sun of a maximum brightness and I have no intention of running a 230 watt display device for any amount of time. Now on quite the opposite end of the power spectrum we have got the internal speakers which are not particularly impressive in any way, shape or form. And I will now proceed to shamelessly play a clip of Big Clive's lovely bassy voice just to demonstrate this fact. You know when you go on the internet and you're looking for one thing and you end up buying another? Well, that happened recently, you see. Not particularly impressive and indeed that is as loud as they will ever go. So, I have raided the graveyard of broken TVs at work and found some suitable improvements. These are the speakers out of a 65-inch Sony TV rather high-end device and they sound pretty okay if you ask me. And due to some clever software trickery with the internal uh, realtek based audio, I can just pull a plug and swap between the two sets. I've got a bit of an obsession with overalls. I fashion items, so to speak. And I wanted a pair of these American classic uh, Carhartt overalls. The ones that pose. And that is indeed a considerable step up. So... Now I'm just going to main to east of the case, uh, install a power supply for the amplifier because it cannot run an audio amp off the internal PC power supply. It causes a horrible loud ground loop and uh, then we'll have a rather decently sounding TV. Alright and here's the uh, rather obvious uh, setup for switching between the two audio devices. Uh, I've just connected the this little TDA7492 chip amp to the uh, front panel audio header which was entirely unused on the motherboard and the uh, internal original speakers they just went through the uh, rear panel jumper like any other set of audio devices so they, I'll obviously use this jack in the future for a proper stereo setup but the way we've done it now is if I just disconnect this the internal speakers activate like a giant touchscreen laptop. And the power supply I'm going to use is just a generic 19 volt laptop power supply straight out of the trash. It seems to work just fine. So, with the audio issues sorted, there's just one thing left to consider, and that is power management. Since this is originally an industrial display, uh, they haven't paid much attention to the idle power consumption, and indeed, when powered off, it would draw 7 watts in standby. And that is because there is no mechanism in place for the TV power supply 
to turn off. The huge 9 amp 24 volt rail is present 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and that is entirely unnecessary and we're gonna fix it. So I've made a little breakout board which just has two relays on it and a 12 volt input from the PC power supply. They're making it so that when the 12 volt from the PC power supply is present the relays will click and switch on the 230 volts going into both the TV power supply and the audio amp power supply. Meaning that when the PC is offering standby and the 12 volts isn't there, there is no current flowing at all into those devices and their standby power is zero. I've also taken the time to do a more proper job of the brightness control potentiometer circuit because in my little experiment I just tapped off the power on enable pin of the inverter board and that pin wasn't quite able to drive the 10k potentiometer uh, leaving the 3.3 volt enable voltage at about two and a half uh, which wasn't enough to actually push the display to its full brightness which is more like 270 watts power consumption for the whole thing rather than 230. So the way I've solved this is very simple. It's just a 10k resistor in series with a 3.6 volt center diode, uh, which I'm then tapping the a regulated voltage off of and feeding into the external 10k brightness control potentiometer, which by the way is epoxied and mounted with a magnet so that you can just tack it onto the case anywhere you desire. It's on a roughly one meter long cord so it can go to pretty much any corner of a device save for the top which is going to be very handy. I chose to use the potentiometer rather than some kind of fancy Arduino or software controlled design because I simply have a preference for potentiometers with regards to volume and brightness controls. I do not like having to go through a menu or click around with a PC in order to do something as simple as adjusting the screen brightness. In order to make this thing even more scalable in the future, because I'm not really sure what I'm going to use it for, I've also added two external switched 230 volt outlets, which can be used to power any normal mains power device, for instance, a stereo or even a light, meaning that's why I can use this PC as a simple on-off control for an AV system or just lighting in the room if I so need to. It's uh, not really something I have an immediate need for, but I had some spare panel space on the case and uh, a spare relay, so I figured, why not? I love having switched power anyway, since it enables me to have devices which literally have zero standby power. So there you go, that's what happens when I get my hands on a giant touchscreen PC. Now I'm still kind of debating what to use this thing for, part of me wants to just hang it in the kitchen and have a fantastic media center for when I'm cooking, but another part of me kind of wants to sacrifice the shelving above my bench in order to just have the best PDF schematic viewing machine ever conceived. Uh, for the time being, however, it's just going to be sitting around for a while because I need to dig up the funds to actually buy a wall made for it and after that perhaps we can make something cool. Rest assured, I am most happy to see this thing not reside in the scrap heap because it is an amazing device to own. So with that I'm going to have to thank you for watching and I will leave you with a bit of a montage. Cheerio! This is quite an interesting device, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's in this. 